In this clothing guide for Elder Scrolls Online, we'll detail how to craft powerful light and medium armor. The clothing vocation is very useful for endgame players because there are some fantastic sets that have always remained strong, namely Hunding's Rage and Law Gulianos. Max level and clothing also lets you improve any acquired purple gear to legendary gear, which is extremely valuable to complete endgame sets. You can, however, still utilize this vocation as you level up, as the material cost for the lower level crafted sets is quite minimal. Just keep in mind that until you reach the champion ranks, it may be more trouble than it's worth, and you will quickly outlevel it. To start clothing, visit any clothing station. These are not hard to find and can be located in every major town and even some of the smaller ones. To get certified, talk to Milaneth, who can be found near the Fighters Guild in any starting area, as well as Vivek in Morrowind or Alinor in Somerset. By completing this simple quest, you can unlock clothing writs, an important component for leveling up clothing and obtaining rare materials. To start creating light armor, medium armor, and furniture, go to any clothing crafting station, and once there, there are six options present. Refining creates clothier processed materials, which are used in the creation process from raw materials such as scraps, jute, flax, etc. Light armor materials such as jute and flax are collected throughout the world in the form of plants. Scraps are medium armor materials and they are acquired by killing and looting animals or beasts. Of the two, medium armor materials are generally easier to gather because there are places on the map that contain lots of animals and beasts that drop them. Raw materials acquired have a 50% chance to scale with the character level or tailoring level. Creation Creation is crafting light and medium armor. Looking from left to right, light armor pieces come first. In order to create an item, you need to do the following. 1. Choose which item to create. 2. Choose clothing processed material type and amount. 3. Choose style which determines how gear looks. Unlocking new styles is done by acquiring motifs which usually drop anywhere randomly, but can also be acquired in other ways. Style materials are acquired through deconstructing, refining, and via the vendor that usually stands near the clothing station. 4. The final optional step is to choose a trait. Trait materials are obtained by deconstructing gear and refining raw clothing materials. Deconstruct. Deconstruction means destroying an item in order to get materials from it and inspiration, crafting XP. It is the primary way of leveling clothing since it gives more inspiration than creation. Keep in mind that you do not get much inspiration from deconstructing items that you craft yourself, but you do from items others have crafted. Improvement. Improvement means upgrading item quality. More materials used equals a higher chance of success. Items are destroyed upon failure, so ideally you'd want to use enough materials to reach 100%. Improvement materials can be found by deconstructing items and refining cloth. Research. Traits are researched through this option. Items can be researched only if they have the magnifying glass icon next to it. Upon successful trait research, you are given an option to use the trait in creation, but only for that same piece of equipment you acquired the trait from. For example, if training trait has been researched from a helmet, you can use training trait on any future helmet created. Patterns. Patterns option is used to create furniture. Recipes for more furniture drop randomly and can also be bought from guild traders and guild stores. These usually require a special material called Bast in order to create. Bast is acquired randomly from looting clothier nodes. Researching traits on every piece of equipment is very important for multiple reasons. Firstly, when out in the world you will stumble upon special crafting stations where you can craft sets that give specific set bonuses. These bonuses depend on the craft station and every set has trait requirements, meaning if you did not research enough traits for that piece of equipment, you will not be able to craft it. So if I want to craft White Strake's epaulets, for example, I need to have any four traits researched for epaulets. If I want to craft White Strake's breeches, also any four traits researched are needed, but for breeches. Do not forget that at special crafting stations, every vocation station will produce the same set bonuses. For example, if you use the jewelry station at this same location, White Strake's rings and necklaces can be crafted. Another important aspect of having all traits researched is that you can utilize transmutation. Transmutation offers an option to change traits on equipment, but binds the item to you in the process. Bound items are non-tradable, but can still be deconstructed or used on alternate characters via the bank. Transmutation can only be done in the Clockwork City DLC area or at any player housing that possesses a transmutation station. Visit the Hall of Refined Techniques in the Brass Fortress to start transmuting. In order to transmute an item, you'll need the following. Access to a transmutation station, the desired trait researched for the specific item in question, and possess the amount of transmutation crystals needed for transmutation, 50. Transmute crystals are obtained via daily random dungeons, veteran dungeons, trials, undaunted pledges, PvP, and holiday events. They usually come in the form of transmutation geodes that need to be opened. The amount each geode possesses inside is somewhat randomized, with higher quality possessing more. 
Keep in mind that you cannot store more than the cap 200 in your inventory, so don't open your geodes if you are already there. Upgrading clothing skills is crucial to creating powerful equipment while also being efficient to reduce the leveling grind. Upgrading these passives is done by investing skill points into them. Skill points are earned through various means such as leveling up, doing quest chains with skill points as reward, non-repeatable dungeon quests, sky shards, and ranking up in PvP. Tailoring. The tailoring passive allows you to use higher level materials. This is very important for leveling clothing and should be upgraded as soon as it is available. Kenai Cloth. The Kenai passive makes plants in the world more visible by making them glow when nearby. This is very useful because it can be hard to spot fibrous plants among foliage. But at least one point here. Outfitter Hireling. A hireling that collects clothing materials when offline and sends them via mail. Very useful to start amassing lots of materials early on. Unraveling. The unraveling passive improves the chances of extracting more and better materials via deconstruction and allows for refining more powerful tannins from raw materials. Very useful throughout the game and should be upgraded when available. Stitching. The stitching passive reduces research times and allows researching more items at once. Useful for researching traits early to be prepared for end game. Take this as soon as you can. Tanning Expertise. The Tanning Expertise passive improves chance of upgrading item quality through improvement option at clothing stations. Not needed immediately, but you should start placing points here as you get higher levels. Leveling clothing is a fairly straightforward process. Inspiration Crafting XP is gained by creating items and deconstructing them. Deconstruction yields more XP and is the best way of leveling clothing. Running lots of dungeons and deconstructing gear from those runs is a nice way of leveling up clothing. Daily clothing writs help a lot too, not only because of the inspiration gain, but also because of possible rewards such as higher quality tannins. The fastest method requires a friend or alternate character, and the following is a step-by-step -step guide. You and a friend or alt craft lots of level 4 sashes or belts, then exchange them with a friend or use the bank to exchange them with an alt. Deconstruct the crafted gear while they deconstruct the gear you crafted, upgrade the tailoring passive, Repeat the first three steps, only this time with level 16 sashes or belts until clothing level 10. Upgrade the tailoring passive again, and repeat. Keep doing these steps with sashes or belts, level 26, 36, 46, CP 10, 40, 80, and 100. Deconstruct until the next rank in tailoring passive is unlocked, putting a point into it, and continue with crafting and deconstructing higher level sashes or belts until the next rank in tailoring is unlocked. Clothing in SO is an important crafting vocation for any damage dealer or healer, since they use light and medium armor. Leveling clothing is done primarily by deconstructing gear found throughout the world, and using the fast leveling method mentioned in the previous section. Doing daily clothing writs and clothing surveys is also a great way to level up faster and amass enough materials. Learn where the best place to farm plants and scraps are because there are definitely better places than others. Plants usually grow in green field-like areas while scraps drop from animals and beasts. There are places like public dungeons where there are an abundance of animals and beasts that spawn quickly, and you can farm hundreds of scraps in a very short amount of time. Do not refine any more materials than is necessary to craft what you need until you have maxed out the unraveling passive. This will give you the highest yield of Drew Wax, which is used to upgrade epic quality items to legendary. These are valuable items, and there is no reason to waste the opportunity to acquire them by processing materials you do not even need. As with any crafting vocation, inspiration gain it can be boosted by 10% from SO+, 10% from the Orc Race, and 20% from the Inspiration Boost Champion Skill. Stay tuned for more SO Guides as we take on crafting, dungeons, PvP, and of course builds. <laughs>